thanks Emily for being here with us. We appreciate it and appreciate your patience with the technical difficulties as well. I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much. Awesome. So Emily um, is the founder of Me, Myself, and Money, and she is a money relationship coach. Um, so a little bit of introduction. She has a master's in family financial planning and is also a certified money coach. She started in academia as a research analyst and then grant writer and then all the way up to program uh, assistant. So um, again, thanks for being here, Emily. Um, what brought you out of academia and into the personal world and entrepreneurial world um, of money coaching? Yeah, thank you. Um, yes, well, one thing that has connected all of the roles that I've had in my jobs is that I'm a, by nature very analytical and I really like research. And mm -hmm. whether it's um, whether it's with uh, data, with money, with you know numbers, or whether it's with um, with words, I like to look at the story in whole and then just pick out the parts that are most meaningful and relevant. So, so whether I'm doing that in research or whether I'm doing that in money coaching now, it's really the same of kind of mining this data. So right now it's mining someone's money story yeah. and helping them pull out the parts that are relevant. Um, and in the more logistical answer to your question, um, yeah, my husband and I, he uh, about six, seven years ago, uh, got a new job and we moved out of state. So that was an opportunity for me to reevaluate um, what I wanted to do with my life. And I had always had a long time interest in financial, uh, personal financial planning and financial uh, things. So, so at that point, I attended Iowa State University. Mm -hmm. I had an online degree for family financial planning. Okay, that's really interesting because I guess that that is probably the opposite of what I would expect since you like deal so much more with the emotional side of things that you're more analytical, but I guess you're probably good at both because then you can like use the analytical skills to apply them to behavioral issues and then still have the empathy to relate to people and help them work through it. Yeah, and I think also because um, for some reason I'm able to see emotions, I think, more clearly than some other people. And I'm very comfortable um, working with people who are, you know, showing their emotions. So yeah. that's, that's um, another area where I'm able to pick out the emotional aspects of the story. And so I do that in my work with clients. That's yeah. good. I, I think a lot of people have difficulty with that. They're uncomfortable when people show their emotions, right? Yes. Um, <laughs> and they're kind of like, keep that at home. But and maybe that's part of the problem is that people don't get enough acceptance and people willing to listen and hear and and they've been taught to to suppress it in right <laughs> yeah and especially when it comes to money you know i mean the the traditional world of financial advising and coaching is to help people with the logistics you know working with the logical yeah. part of our brain the neocortex all of the executive functions but for so many people they're stuck in the emotional world of money um, in the limbic system of the brain, that's where our unconscious is, and that's where our patterns re that we repeat are stored. And so in order to understand why we're behaving the way we are around money, especially if it's contrary to how we actually want to behave, you know, if yeah. we want to save money, if we don't want to spend it right away, but we don't understand why we keep repeating this behavior, then we really need to go back to our history and look at the emotions and see where that's coming from. It is interesting. They say a lot of the important functions that you do and the things of how you think um, aren't necessarily decided by the frontal cortex. It just makes an excuse for why you did it, right? Absolutely. Yeah, it just justifies it. <laughs> That's funny. So I guess you pretty much answered my next question is why I focus so much on the emotional side of things or as you call it, relationship with money. Uh, but I guess... Yeah, but I... Well, let me just expand for just one second if I can because... Um, because our decisions, our emotional decisions are driven by the unconscious. So if we don't know why we're acting a certain way, we can't change it. So that's why it's so important to follow the emotions because that really gets us to the core. Once we understand, then we have the power to change our behavior. For sure. So that kind of leads us into our next question. Um, and it sounds like almost anybody could benefit from this, but who more than others um, would you think would benefit from more, you know, addressing these issues and focusing more on the emotional rather than they're fine because they're more analytical and, and, and they function well with just someone like uh, a regular financial planner or advisor or what so? Yep. So anyone who is, um, has an uneasy relationship with money and, you know, 
if that's you, you can just definitely identify with that. And that can manifest itself in different ways. It could be um, someone who has a history of you know, growing up, maybe they had a cycle of feast and famine in their house, so money was free and abundant, but then, you know, the next month they didn't have any, and that just sets them up for a cycle of, you know, not not being able to rely on money, so maybe when they get it, they just feel like they need to spend it because they don't know when they're going to get it again. So, you know, you know if you feel like really anxious around money yeah. or avoidant um, or just have this love-hate relationship with money, those people, and especially if they've tried to do something about it, but they always mm -hmm. fall back into their old habits. That's a really good candidate for money coaching. That's so interesting I mean, to, to me that you say that, because I would think, I, I, I guess I just, it's my mind where it's like, hey, if I didn't have reliability with money or what so, then I almost feel like that would trigger in me kind of a hoarding thing, not an extra spending thing. But again, I guess that hasn't been my experience in life. And you're actually have the experience with the practical things happening to people and that's what happens a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. And, and hoarding could also be a, a you know an outcome of this as well. It's all mm -hmm. about how you know our circumstances when we were growing up and then that's filtered through our innate temperament and personality and our unique experiences. So you know it all comes out in a different way for, for everybody. Okay. So then this is a question that just is curious to me because I'm more of an analytical person that's probably not as comfortable with emotions. And it seems to me that your job would be very hard and draining, but you know, there's all kinds of psychologists and different people that do this and they enjoy their jobs and it's very rewarding. So tell us a little bit about that and what it's like to be you and do your job and how you feel about it. Yeah. Oh, I love my job. Um, <laughs> well, I'm not a therapist. So although our sessions do get very emotional, and that's good. Um, it's not, you know, I don't work with clients for months and months at a time where they're just sitting and we're crying every session. Um, so what I love about it is that feeling of relief that that moment when the client makes a connection. Oh, oh, there's a reason why I'm doing this. Now I understand it. And now I can do something different. So it's, it's very powerful to me and it, it keeps me going. That's awesome. That's awesome. I would think that you would need to have some like that reaction to it versus mine to be like, it's like a vampire sucking from me, you know, but that's, we're all different. Right. And we're better at different things. And like, even as I'm building this company, you hire people that aren't just like you, you got to get diversity and different people that can help people in different ways. Um, it's awesome. So let's explore some of your site and services, the resources you offer, uh, et cetera, and show people the practical side of, of what we're talking about. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Thank you. So can you see my screen? Yeah. All right. So this is my website. It's me, myself, and money.com. And as you can see, the first thing you see on my main page now is about this course that I'm offering. So up until now, I've only worked with people one-on-one. -on -one. I work with individuals and couples. Um, mm -hmm. But I've wanted to do an online course because, you know, not everyone is either in the financial place or, you know, the, the mental place to do one-on-one -on -one coaching right now. So I've been trying to figure out how I can do this um, for people on, on more of a broad level, an online level. And I think I figured it out, but I really want to make sure that this is powerful and valuable before I go ahead and sell it. So I'm looking for testers. So if anyone is out there who would like to try this uh, four week online course for free, you can uh, click here for more information and to apply. Okay. So with that, is it, is it individual or is it a group type session? So that it's going to be, um, it's good. It's sort of like a self study with video modules and lots of exercises. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And it, does um, it culminate with like something live or is it all an online course on this? Well, this first round will have a bit of live in it. Um, so I'm not sure yeah, if uh, yeah. going forward the online course as well. Yeah. Okay. I got you. Yep. So this explains just about my philosophy. And then at the end, and you can also get it up here on services. This explains mm -hmm. my services. So I work with individuals, but I also work with couples, and I work with couples in two different ways. Uh, the core process for couples, um, this is very similar to the individual work, but we spend more time together because, of course, there are the dynamics between the couples that sure. we work with. Um, and so this is for couples who've been together for a while, who have some active um, concerns about money as a couple. And then this, uh, my third offering is conscious coupling. And this, I just really love this. So this is for newer couples. Maybe they've been together a couple of years. Um, 
they they usually they haven't they're not at the stage yet where they have shared all of their financials with each other but they're getting to that stage so they know that needs to happen and there is so much anxiety around this especially around debt sure. now do they do do couples do you have like specific like guidance for them that they should do their finances a certain way or do you just try to see what their preferences are and help them deal with it like in a productive like healthy way yeah the latter so so this this is really helping couples to understand both themselves and each other in a very holistic way so again we dive into their money history even with the conscious couples and it, it um eventually at the last session we do the big reveal where they reveal their finances. But at that point, they're much more comfortable with themselves, they're much more comfortable with their partner, and so it creates that safe space for them to open up that Pretty conversation. Cool. It is good, because I know people that have gone through years, decades, of kind of doing their own thing together, especially people, especially people that have gotten divorced and then get remarried, because they're just like, I do not like want to have to split everything again, or I don't want somebody telling me what to do, or whatever. And so I could see where there'd be a lot of issues in that even versus just the newly but that's probably a whole different can of worms right yeah yeah but i have <laughs> yes I, I can help people in any of those situations <laughs> mm -hmm. well cool so yeah. when you do the the couples one uh that core couples um do they do some individual stuff alone and then come together or is everything together most of it is together but i usually do meet with each of them at least one time separately because then we can under yeah they can, if there's anything that they need to reveal to me, they can. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And then you yeah, had that money quiz. I, I took that personally a while ago. I thought that was pretty cool. So yeah. So this is a very quick and easy quiz for you to take just to understand where you are um, in your relationship with money at the moment. It's very fluid. Um, so it's, it's something that a lot of people enjoy doing. And then I have a little link for advisors. I like to work with advisors. So just as you were saying just a few minutes ago, you know, we each have our areas of strength. So yeah. if you're analytical and you just like to work with the clients on, on the practical, you know, the practical applications of money, that's great. And that's really necessary. But if you have clients who are arguing, they're not, you know, they can't follow their plan or an individual who they say, yeah, yeah, I want this, but then their actions are contrary to that then you can send them over to me or another money coach and we can work with them. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's really cool. I think especially if um, it's a separate entity or person, because maybe they could be more open with you or a money coach and get everything out and resolve some of their issues. And then, you know, with like, say someone like me, then they're not always like, Oh, I open my heart and whatever to them. Not that that would be a bad thing per se, but um, I could see where, especially, uh, maybe some more, uh, especially men or what so could, you know, feel more comfortable with being able to open up like that and then have an almost like a separate relationship between the, the two, the financial advisor and the money coach, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's a really good point because they might not feel comfortable doing that with you. Even if you're open to that experience with them, yeah. you know, they might, they might not want to um, the mix the, the financial with the emotional. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. So what resources do we have here? Yeah, so then I have a resources page and this is uh, where I keep all my resources over here. If you can't afford money coaching, um, there are some no cost services here. Um, and then over on the right side, I have my list of favorite books. So this includes both uh, practical and of course, emotional uh, books about money. Awesome, that's great. Mm -hmm. And then of course, to get in touch with me, it's very easy, just click the get in touch button and you can schedule a free call with me. That's great. You know, um, we actually just launched a new thing called The Revolution, and one of the things that we're setting up is where people can donate to help people less fortunate, and I think we were gonna actually do kind of three different levels of that from somebody that needs something like money coaching or financial counseling, you could donate this amount of money to help somebody else, um, or to do a retirement plan, or if they needed a full retirement plan, and then people could choose what level they wanted to give. So we'll have to bump heads with you on that, to see if you might be able to help us. Um, yeah, absolutely, help that, that is such a great idea. That maybe not, couldn't really afford it, but there's so many people out there that are uh, well off or want to help people, uh, could help those people connect, um, and then hopefully uh, give them a, a hand up, right? More than a handout, you know? Mm -hmm. so. Well, awesome. Well, thanks so much for being on, Emily. Is there any kind of last words or gems of wisdom you'd like to leave for everyone? 
Um, I just want to let everyone know that if you do have an uneasy relationship with money, if you feel shame, like you should be able to do this and you're just not, just know there there is nothing fundamentally wrong with you. You just need to write, work with the right person to understand where this is coming from, and then you'll be able to move forward. That's awesome. You know, I think that is really important is like, you can do things It always, I, I mean, I get it from grown adults, but you know, for my kids, they say, I can't do this. I was like, yes, you can do it. You can do it. You just got to try and practice and believe in yourself. And eventually you could probably do just about anything, you know, and sometimes get the right help. Right. Yes. <laughs> Well, thanks again for being here, Emily. Uh, we really appreciate you and the work that you do. Uh, amazing that you're able to do it from anywhere in the world. Apologize to everyone else for the snafu with the live broadcast, but this turned into a really good production. It's just going to be 30 or 40 minutes late, so you can still watch it, get all the great information. And if you're watching it in the future, um, it seems pretty timeless because though we may upgrade our technology and our knowledge, uh, our emotional and, and, uh, uh, subconscious will probably stay pretty constant, right? <laughs> uh, so jo uh, next week, we're actually going to be off. Uh, we usually take the fourth week of the month off. The uh, week after that, we're going to have our fin financial planning episode. Then the week after that, which is the seventh, we have our golf scramble, and we're going to have John Lombinsky on, who's our primary sponsor, but he is one of the best guys out there, uh, really awesome real estate agent, um, and give you a kind of update on, on kind of that. And then we're going to do our book review the week after that, uh, which we are doing on Genghis Khan and how it changed the world. So join us for those. And again, thank you so much, Emily, and you will all have a super weekend. Thanks, Phil. You're welcome.